is the confidence of all that she works with. It's remarkable what she has done during this pandemic, the way she has engaged the students. And if I were at that school as a student, I don't think I would have missed a beat. She has been so good at bringing that, that school and community together. Kind, creative, courageous. She listens intently. It's an absolute pleasure to have Janani present this afternoon about what she has done at Hogar Secondary, but more particularly, what she has done to make a difference to the quality of education for all students. Janani. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, uh, Bill, and thank you, Avis, for your uh, kind introductions. And many thanks to the Rotary Club for this kind invitation to share our journey at Bill Hogarth Secondary School. I'm wondering if the organizer would allow me to share my screen. Okay. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay. So Bill Hogarth Secondary School was opened in 2017 and it was named after uh, the incredible Bill Hogarth as Dr. Glaze uh, shared. Uh, We're so happy to be named after such an esteemed uh, school and system leader. These are um, on our school crest. Uh, you see our core commitments uh, demonstrated. So our motto is modern learners, global leaders. Uh, certainly we support the development of student leadership because we see it as the, that every student has the potential to be a leader. Uh, but most importantly and very uniquely to our school is that we teach our different subjects uh, based on our what we fondly refer to as our six C's, also known as global competencies. So character development is one of our foundational C's, along with citizenship, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. And today I'd like to share how these six C's appear in our school on a daily basis. And we hope that you will see themes that resonate uh, with the Rotary Club and uh, the commitments there as well. So when we opened in 2017, we were drawing on so many different holding schools that were waiting for a brand new school to be built um, in the community. And so because we didn't have our own school data, we had to go to board data uh, where this the school board was sharing that overall, uh, this was the data that was there about what students were feeling in general about school at that time in 2017. So students were not finding school were particularly interesting. Um, but we also so we decided, you know what, as we open as a school, we want to make sure that we include passion projects as ways in which we can engage students so that they can be excited about coming to school. Another piece of data was that students weren't necessarily finding the, what they were learning at school useful in their everyday life. And to address this issue, we made a commitment that we would have cross-curricular connections so that we wouldn't be teaching science or art separately, but we would be making sure that as we taught every day, students could see the connections between different subjects. As well, we were a little bit concerned that students were not seeing um, the, their ability to investigate real life issues. And so that becomes problematic, especially when we see that students just end up cramming or memorizing for tests. And we wanted learning to be really meaningful. And so we committed as well that as we opened the school, we would have an inquiry based approach to learning so that the learning would stick with them for life. As well, uh, student well-being and mental health was important to us because the data was suggesting that students across the, um, the school board were not feeling like that there, there would be someone that they could speak to if they were feeling uncomfortable or harassed. And so we really wanted to make sure that we established a strong sense of community in the school where every student felt like they would matter and belong. As well, 
we could see that we would have to build resiliency in students because um, they lack, they, the data was suggesting that they might lack the skills uh, to bounce back uh, from uh, you know, life's challenges. And certainly the last two years have presented an incredibly unique set of challenges for all of us, uh, both locally and globally. And so character development was a strong commitment right from the opening because we knew that we needed to make sure students could persevere in the face of obstacles to remain optimistic and to certainly um, be able to respect everyone depending on their life choices. In addition, we needed to make sure that students knew where to access mental health support. And so for us, we didn't want it just to be a referral, but well-being had to be a commitment that um, we saw every single day. And so we start every week now off with a Mindful Monday practice where the whole school engages in a mindful practice. That might be a guided uh, meditation. It might be a gratitude a reflection. A series of different um, practices uh, is what we explore each Monday to make sure that uh, students are equipped with the skills. And then it goes further beyond an individual classes, but we certainly have a whole school practice to address this need. And the environment was something the data was suggesting that we should also look at because only 54% at that time were saying that they were learning to protect the environment. Um, so we knew that the environment was a commitment and an eco we wanted to be an eco school. It looked like students really needed some guidance in terms of helping uh, the global community. And as you can see in our motto, modern learners, global leaders, we wanted students to know that they can make a difference in the world and those learning opportunities should present themselves in each class. And as well, um, it was really important for us to, for students to do more than just learn, but to take action. And so in our civics classes, all of the students have an opportunity to engage in an issue that interests them and to take action and report on that action so that they can see that in, um, one course alone that they can make a difference. Our uh, school's plan was based on the board's plan, which was about having positive and growth mindsets, about having skills that were transferable beyond school, and also to make sure there was really deep learning happening at the same time. And hence, as we began, uh, we wanted to make sure that um, there was always excellence in education that all parents in the community could be guaranteed their child would get an exemplary education. And this would be done by ensuring that we taught more than just science, English, math, drama, um, you could name the subject. We did more than that. We were going to teach um, students the importance of character, citizenship, education, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. And at the same time, we would commit to developing leaders in each of our students. So that is how our vision began. And so then we brought our brand new staff and we said, okay, so what is this gonna look like in a history class? What will this look like in a geography class? And so all of the staff gave input in terms of how this could really be executed and how a school plan could be formed. Um, we asked our parent community give us some ideas. What would be our foundational um, values? You know, when students, when the community was looking at the school, what would our walls represent? You know, what would the front door, what would we, how, what could we do to exude that feeling of warmth and community? The window represented um, some of the activities and events that could take place that would let the, the community know what the school would be about. And so we gathered voice from our staff, from our uh, parents, as well as our students. The same time we were thinking about what would the classrooms look like? This is the way in which the school board funded uh, classes and they were in traditional classes with 30 desks in, a ro in rows. What we were looking for was something a little bit different. We wanted to open with a school that had flexible learning spaces. So high top tables, low tables, flexible seating, because we knew that would already in its establishment uh, promote collaboration. 
And so you can see here, we have guests from the school uh, learning a little bit about how we collaborate. Um, and so the intentional use and purchase of whiteboard tables really help to support the concept of making thinking visible. Teachers were also trained in many ways so that uh, they would understand how we would build that sense of understanding and community uh, by having build, by building thinking classrooms. So it was not necessarily a teacher always standing at the front of a classroom, but really moving around and encouraging students to stand up, to solve problems on the whiteboard. And so for a different way of, for example, learning math, teachers had to be trained, which you can see on the left. And then we also had to explain to parents why our approach in this example for teaching math would be so different from their own experience of learning math in high school. Um, as we mentioned, we wanted every student to feel like they belong to a strong community. And so this was one of the activities as students entered the front doors the first time um, back in 2017, we made sure they have their thumbprint, they signed off so that everyone as they walk through every day can see that they are a proud member of the Hogarth community. As well, um, in our grand hall, you will see uh, photos of all the students and we ask each one of them as they enter each year, what is your legacy statement? As you wake up in the morning, what might you be, um, you know, what, what will your commitment be? What will your touchstone statement be? And so here's an example from Yashvin, where she sort of thought about it, went through the exercise about thinking about what a legacy statement is. And she decided hers would be my legacy is to treat everyone how I would like to be treated with kindness and respect. I wish to glide through life happily and to bring happiness and joy to anyone that will accept it. Here's another example. And this is from Malik. And he said, I believe that fear is often illusion stopping you from pursuing greatness, but I will pursue greatness. And so each year when our grade nine class comes into the school, they're walked through an activity so that everyone's legacy statements are available. During the pandemic, we had to move from the physical form to a digital form, but still we wanted to make sure that every student knew that schooling at BHSS was different because we really valued each one of them. And we want to make sure that they feel like they're part of a strong community that really cares about them. So um, we can have a vision and we can ask people for their opinions, but then how do we make sure we can sustain and execute it over the past five years? And that has happened because of many, many different approaches that have been extremely intentional. So when we opened the school, we made sure we had a plan. We um, had every classroom has posters or anchor charts that describe our six C's, uh, parents, uh, were brought in for information sessions and each year when we welcome our grade nine students, we share with families our commitments on grade eight open house when parents are shopping around for different schools. Uh, we let them know how our commitments are slightly different, but we feel extremely meaningful. Then each department is asked to create their own plans. How might they support character development in their particular subject area? And they're asked to share that across all grades. So what does it look like in grade nine drama versus grade 12 drama? How might this look like in grade nine D street math versus grade 12 calculus? And so at the school, we have also developed a set of um, a continuum of global competencies so that we know what character development and our strategies might be like in grade nine versus how we might be approaching that in grade 12 as we head towards uh, congratulating our graduates as they come to the end of their school. And whenever an, a club or a team is being proposed for our extracurricular activities, their club proposal has to, they have to be able to explain how their club's activities are consistent with our six C's at BHSS. So at BHSS, we have a commitment to making sure that we have learning partnerships um, with our community. We make sure that we have learning environments that support uh, student learning and uh, work. Uh, we make sure that we have pedagogical practices that are really steeped in terms of our six C's. 
Uh, certainly, we commit to teaching the Ontario curriculum, but we also commit to teaching it in a way that is unique and different. And at BHSS, we have an approach to teaching and learning that uh, leverages digital skills. So for example, uh, we might uh, not always, we don't have traditional computer labs. In fact, we have um, technology that is um, transportable from classroom to classroom, so that as many students have access to uh, the, the classroom uh, technology. I'm just gonna stop screen sharing for one second uh, because I'd like to take you through um, just the way in which all of, in case you're wondering, well, what, what might these six C's look like as uh, we talk about those? So let me give me one second and I'll pull this up. So um, as I mentioned, leadership is a commitment at our school and all students when they enter grade nine are invited to take a leadership course. In this leadership course, the core text is the seven habits of highly effective teens. And so they're really steeped in the learning of learning how to be a leader. And you can see students organize uh, many of the events at the school where we give back to the community. This is an example of the students um, organizing the annual Terry Fox Run. And then every winter, we open our school doors up to something called Winter Wonderland, where we invite students from kindergarten to grade five to come in and our students organize different activities, whether it is a dance competition, um, crafts, cookie decorating, you name it, just to make sure that students are giving back to our school community. At the same time, uh, character is very, very important in character development, and that is in forming partnerships with the local teen shelter, 360 Kids, and encouraging acts of kindness in ways where we can help others without looking for recognition. Um, these are examples of notes that are put on lockers just to sort of um, uplift and motivate students as they walk through the halls. Uh, citizenship. Students are involved beyond the class. So oh, it's spoken about a citizenship class, but also in terms of supporting our local community, whether it is planting trees for Earth Day or supporting the local community uh, through the food drives that take place in the fall and the, uh, in the spring. Collaboration is both in the classroom and outside. So you, you saw before our flexible furniture that students are invited and um, we try to develop collaboration, but certainly in terms of all the other activities, whether it is music or um, sports. And in the, on the, in the corner of this screen, you'll see our butterfly garden that was donated by the David Suzuki Foundation. And in this way, students uh, years and senior years have come together to plant a beautiful butterfly garden that enhances the exceptional garden that Mrs. Hogarth has helped to create at the school. And it's a lovely spot uh, to pop by. If you're ever in the, in the area, uh, we would love to show that to you. Communication. So we commit to supporting students both digitally, orally, and in writing in terms of developing their skills. And this can happen through presentations in class. It can happen through taking students to business competitions, or even when students are involved in their robotics competition, because we need to make sure that students come together to be able to tell each other how they might be able to program that robot to throw a basketball into a hoop, because all of that requires communication amongst each other and then communication with the robot itself as well. Creativity uh, has been seen in so many forms. The mascot that the students create decided upon and voted on years ago called the Hornet um, to supporting the local community. So across the street at the Cornell Community Center, the, the library asked if our students could help to uh, create a mural 
in their children's section. And so they asked for different ideas and then the library selected a particular um, idea. And here are students, you know, painting the mural in a cozy corner in the local library. And uh, so that, that little plaque is in the library at this time. Um, for us, it's really, really important that students think critically about local and global issues. So asking the questions, whose stories are represented in our history books? Whose voices are missing? Historically, whose voices have been silenced? Who have typically been scientists and mathematicians that our textbooks have taught us about? And who might we benefit from learning more about when we talk about discoveries and inventions? And so the use of genius, our projects and passion projects really lend the way um, to learning more deeply and critically about important issues in the world. And finally, these are just examples of the different posters that uh, you can see in the school that speak to uh, the different six C's at our school. So I just wanted to sort of give you a glimpse of what our six C's and leadership look like and how we came to uh, all of this at the school by having access to student voice, to parent voice, and as well to staff voice. But certainly, um, the most important C that we start with is character development, because without that, um, nothing else is possible until we actually develop a student's character. And so that is one of our core commitments at VHSS. So that's just a short journey um, into our school and what it looks like. And over to you, uh, Bill and Dr. Glaze, for further commentary. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janani. And just to let you know, uh, Janani is on her own. She, uh, her two vice principals are ill and uh, staff traditionally because of COVID, uh, staff probably, how many are away today? 20? Too many to count. <laughs> um, so I thank you. I have to head out, but uh, I know Bill will uh, be able to respond and answer questions. So Thank you all for having me. And thank you, thank you so much. Again, just, just to you, Janani, what you have done at the school is, is nothing short of, of spectacular. And the involvement of the students uh, together, with the staff together, with the community together, is, it's everything that you imagine should happen in a school. And don't forget, this is a school with probably now 1,500, You're on mute. So we're, we're at 1,600 and next year, just over 1,700 in September. So this is a small village. And to bring that together and to do what, she, that what Janani has done is, is truly, truly remarkable. And it shows what leadership is about and it shows what leaders, the difference that leadership can make. So uh, our thanks to you. Okay. You go because I know that you've got a school to take care of. And I will, I will, uh, Avis and I will respond to questions from, uh, from the group. So thank you. Thank you, Janani. I'm eager to miss you. I'm happy to have you come back maybe and give us more enlightenment to the great presentation. And Bill, just to, have you guys heard of Interact, Rotary Interact? Your program yeah. sounds very familiar to what Rotary is already doing to some, to some extent in the high school age group. I, I, I know the involvement of, of uh, Rotary International. I know what you do. Uh, I know how you give back. But also the type of involvement is, I think, not only congruent with what uh, Janani has done at, at Hogar Secondary, but I think, again, uh, it's what Rotary really stands for and what you strive to do. So, uh, again, I, I hope you get, got a sense of um, what does happen, what can happen when you have clarity and focus. And you can see, Peter, that there is a framework within which uh, Janani has worked. She calls it deep learning, the six C's. But it's marvelous to see what happens when you take the knowledge content and expand it? Because that's what she's done. It's still one of the best uh, highly rated uh, performance schools uh, in Ontario. 
Uh, that being said, the uh, example of, of how you expand and extend uh, that knowledge base that students require, um, it's, it's there for us to, to see and, and you, you had that experience.